in majestic Blythe, Arizona. Ah, yes, there's the Denny's. There's the various gas and sips. Over this shoulder over here is an illustrious uh, Taco Bell. Very, so I just, um, there's my car charging with, and there's the Cheetos truck. Not a sponsor of this show. It'd be great if they were. If they had a vegan Cheeto, I would I'd gladly take them on as a sponsor. There's somebody's uh, chicken bones. Right up here. So yeah, we did a great show last night in Tucson. Thank you to everybody who came out. Um, at the screening room, which is a really cool venue in Tucson. They do like independent movies and, uh, and then they're starting to do more comedy shows. And it's great to be back in Tucson. I went to the University of Arizona, Bear Down. So I saw some friends from college that were there. Shoshone Livingston opened up for me. Um, you might remember Shoshone as she's been on Anything Can Happen. She's also one of the comics in the First Nations Comedy Experience that is um, available at Amazon Prime. Um, so uh, she did a great job. Uh, and then thank you to everybody who came out in Phoenix the, on Thursday at Stir Crazy Comedy Club, a club I've never played before awesome little 120 seat room really intimate fun um near um where the, the big stadium where i think the cardinals fall so we just had a salad let's let's get well let's give us a beautiful scenic tour of blythe so i'll be honest with you like I, this is my first time driving this far in my electric vehicle so i have a bolt a chevy bolt electric dolphin right there, the Aloha Lightning. This was purchased on the beautiful island of Oahu um, in Honolulu, Hawaii. And um, it has a 300 mile range. So I was like, can I make it LA to Phoenix, Phoenix to Tucson, Tucson back to Phoenix, and Phoenix back home. So on the drive out, I stopped twice in Indio and Quartzsite. Got to Phoenix, did a private show Wednesday night in Peoria, Illinois, that was great. Um, and Thursday night, we, sh we did the show at Stir Crazy Comedy Club and in the mall across the street, it's part of this whole like entertainment complex, there was fast charging. So I charged my car during the show, which was awesome. And then drove down to Tucson, which is about 110 miles down. And I checked on, there's an app called Plug Share. If, you, if you're thinking about buying a, a, an EV, there's an app called Plug Share. Um, a little concerned, thank you for showing up in the chat, that shows all of the charging in the area. So I checked in downtown Tucson because that's where the screening room is. It's right in downtown Tucson. And there was a, like four chargers, one the really fast one like this one. This is a super fast one. So this is what's called a level three charger. Level one is like your home outlet and that takes a long time. That'll take like 12 to 24 hours to charge your car. And there's the level two, which I'll show you that. That's what that, that Chevy, um, Chevy Volt, that's the hybrid. So those take about two, three hours to charge your car. And then these are the really fast ones. So my car is, is charging in about an hour. It has a different, literally it's a bigger, literally it's, it's like a bigger hose. It's like putting in more electricity at a faster rate. Um, and it's a little more expensive. So it's about, depending on the company, again, it's like a gas company. Each EV company charges a little. There's EVgo, there's um, ChargePoint is the, they've really started to expand. Um, but anyway, it'll cost me between 15 to $20 to get my, my car was at about 34 miles when I pulled in here and I'll get it to probably around 230, 240. So that's, that's that. So when we, I'm gonna get in the shade because I'm burning up here. Um, so this is, I, I like, you know, full transparency. I love being an EV owner. Um, the infrastructure in California is way better than it was. And the infrastructure in America is getting better. But here was the problem. So the plan was then drive to Tucson and I was staying in Phoenix the whole three nights. So I was gonna drive to Tucson, do the show last night, and then drive back after the show to my hotel in Phoenix. And I was gonna charge my, nice, nice hair. I was gonna charge, I was gonna charge my car while I was doing the show. 
and one charger was broken. Um, another, and I called the company and they couldn't fix it. It was not ChargePoint. ChargePoint's pretty responsive. Um, then I went to another one, they were all in use. Another one, they were like blocked. Another one was in like a closed parking garage at a hotel I couldn't get into. Could not get charging. I spent a half hour driving around downtown Tucson trying to find charging. So I was like, okay. So what that meant was I was gonna have to hit charging on the way home. And the show, there was a scheduling mix up. Mainly I made a mistake. <laughs> the show was supposed to start at eight and end up not starting till. And that was my fault. Um, it was, well, the, the venue and I, we conf like loosely confirmed it in February. And then we didn't like reconfirm and I didn't recheck. So it's mainly on, and they were very cool. They were like, yeah, we should have, we should have locked this down more on our end. And it's okay. But the people that showed up were great and were very, um, were very uh, understanding. Uh, what's up, Dan? Um, is that Dan or Don? I'm sorry. Don Johnson, huh? It's Don Johnson, Miami Bulls. So then I didn't leave Tucson till almost midnight. And then I drove about an hour up to Casa Ground, which is sort of not a little past the halfway point between Tucson and Phoenix. And I charged my car for almost an hour. And I got home at 3.15 in the morning. I slept for about five hours. And then woke up, had breakfast, and left. And then I stopped just outside of Phoenix and charged for like 30 minutes. And then drove almost two hours to Blythe. And so that's the that is the downside of being in a vehicle. I'll be very honest with you. Sometimes the chargers are won't work. They're broken, and, and this is where the federal government. Joe Biden says that we're going to electrify America and it's part of his infrastructure. There needs to be more charging. So in the last two years, especially since when the gas prices went nuts like a year or two ago, EV ownership has gone up 300% in America. 300% more EV purchases in the last two years. So that means we need to have a 300% increase in the charging infrastructure. Um, Tucson, hot and sunny, greetings from Albuquerque. Yes, it is. A lot of charging, good old Dementia Joe right on. Blythe, uh, is that, <laughs> is that in Australia? It's in Arizona. We're right near, we just actually, no, I'm sorry. We're in California. I said Blythe, Arizona, I was completely wrong. We just crossed the border into California, so we are now in So now that now once I'm charged here, then I'll be able to get to probably somewhere between Indio and Palm Springs as I Palm Springs as I drive west. And then literally from Indio, if you pull out a map from Indio along the I-10 freeway all the way into Los Angeles, there's fast charging all along the way. A lot of Walmarts, I'll be very honest with you. There's a lot about Walmart I don't like how they pushed out mom and pop companies, but they have made a commitment to EV charging. So every Walmart now has fast charging. And it's smart business practice. I don't like shopping there, but I'm sitting there charging my car for an hour. I need to get something to eat. I go, you know, like it, it's, and this is what I want to do. See, look at all this sun here. If I have the big, if I had big money, I would start a company. Imagine if we put, a thing A, my car is baking in the sun, right? It's 90 some degrees that would put this car in the shade and have solar panels that would generate, right? And what else do I would put here for EV owners? Now this is, you've got a quick mart here so you can use restrooms and everything, but you know what else would need? I stopped at one EV charging on the way out here on Wednesday. What we, we can't wash our windows. Now this is next to a gas station so I can just pull up here real quick and clean my windshield. But I, I don't know, as an EV owner, I see like all these opportunities to make it better for people and, you know, make some money. Have some fun driving, yes. Sunny in Washington, and I need some AC in the house. 
few things and I, I, I know how the Oasis was. Um, so that's the life of Winnie the owner. But I'm, I, you know, I used to, when I was a road comic younger, I'd be like, I gotta go, gotta go, and stop. I was like an indie pit crew. You know, you pull off the road, 10 minutes late, late, restroom, gas, food, hit the road again. Now as an EV owner, it never changes. So at the last hour, I walked across the street. I got something to eat, I got a salad. I got some vegan protein bars. I'm having to drink Coke Zero since I haven't been able to... Ugh, since I'm hungry. But let me show you where we're at charging wise. So in another five minutes, we'll be at 80% complete, but we're, we're, this isn't enough. Um, we're going to have to get it over 200 so that I could get as far into Indio as I can. Somebody just asked a question, is there a generator or something on site powering the charging station? That's a great question. So I'll show you as much as I know about this to see. So this is the charge point station you hear, hear this big fan blowing so i'm guessing there's some type of conduit over here and then right next to it i'm guessing again i'm not an electrician well there's two things that i see so there are these three start charging stations and then my guess is underneath there see there's there's one two three and then over here Yes, this is charge point EV. So this is this is their this is their charging station. So again, fucking a bunch of solar panels over this. So all the cars are getting shade. And you're getting clean energy. That's what I would be doing. My car is baking. It's been baking on the highway. It doesn't give any break from the sun. When you're driving across the desert, especially in the summer months, it's hot, man. You gotta get, and one thing too, this is, this is, if you ever drive across the desert, you might not know this, since I went to college in Arizona when I lived in California. When you drive across the desert in the summer, and this is like 95, especially when it gets in the 100 degrees, you wanna check your tires when you pull over for bubbles, right? These tires look good, but what can happen when it gets super hot, it, it, a bubble can form here. And you got to, because then you're close to having a ruptured tire. So when you pull over for gas, you're driving across, just check your tires. Everything looks good. Little scrape there that happened last year. It makes me angry. Um, and the car needs a wash. So you check your, see, tires all look good. Especially if you have older tires or an older car, everything looks good. Yeah. So... And this is the, there's an egg roll. That looks tasty. I'm gonna go back to the sheet. So we probably have another 25 minutes. Um, don't the batteries have negative effects from the heat as well? The cells must be cooking, possibly. Uh, transaction. Anna, thank you, go Graham, I appreciate that. Another close-up on your dashboard, please. Sorry, I'll go back there. Um, so, that's another charging live, charging live stream. Boom, look at her, look at the electric dolphin. Isn't she gorgeous? The Aloha Lightning. Just a beautiful car. I like keeping my car clean. I'm gonna get it washed when I get home. Like a clean, vacuumed out, ding, like a nice clean car. It says a lot about who you are as a person. Keep your car clean, thoughts clean, clutter. This is a real thing. I've read a lot of books on clutter. I used to have kind of a, not a bad clutter issue. I wasn't like a hoarder, but read some books on feng shui. When you walk into a home, and it's cluttered, then your brain gets like, oh, I gotta clean that. And it psychologically, sometimes subconsciously, makes you feel like, yeah. Conversely, when you get everything clean and organized, and you walk into your home, your car, your office, and 
it's like clean and organized and you frees up your brain to have to be thinking about things you need to get done, positive things, work projects. It frees up your brain for creativity. You know? We don't need stuff, guys. Get rid of it. I got rid of so much stuff. When I sold everything three years ago, got my life down to four suitcases and just started kind of traveling, living in furnished apartments and stuff. It's, it's, I really, all the stuff you think you need, you don't need it. You don't need it. Um, yeah, clear thinking is important and avoid word salads. <laughs> Um, any problems with charging stations not being available, broken, uh, occupied, left over, what's up? You probably, yeah, if you just joined, so I'll repeat this story for leftover beef cake, who's on the USS Zumwalt on the high seas, keeping the world safe um, from the disease of socialism and freedom. Uh, what, I'm sorry, what was that? Um, so this is what happened. I was giving, I, I on the way down, way across from LA to Phoenix, no problems. Every charger was available, everything was working. Charging in Phoenix, everything was working. Um, in downtown Tucson last night, I had checked beforehand, there was four chargers right within walking distance of the comedy club, the screening room. One was broken, another one was occupied, the other, the other two were occupied, and one like you couldn't get it, like the parking lot was closed or whatever. So I couldn't charge. I, the whole plan was it would be charging while I was on stage. And then I would drive back to, to Phoenix after the show. Because I stayed in Phoenix last night, even though the show was in Tucson. And they're about 100 miles apart. So I only had about 100 some miles left on my car. So I drove about 60 miles to Casa Grande. Casa Grande. Um, and had to charge. I got there around 1 in the morning. Charged for an hour until two. Got back to my hotel around three. So that was the one problem. That is the that can happen as an EV owner. I want to be full disclosure. I don't regret it. I don't like. Oh, I wish I would have. Because I was going to rent a car, and I'm like, glad I didn't use the gas. I'm glad I saved the money. But it's something you just need to know as an EV owner. If you're going to do a long trip like this, you have to have backup plans. You know, and. I picked this location because it gets me as close to Palm Springs as possible, which will be the next place I stop. I agree, Graham. I live the minimalist too. It is liberating. Just join. Scary. Sorry. No worries. No worries. Um, a small city on the California, Colorado River near the border of California. Yeah, that's correct. But no, I'm glad you asked again, Leftover, because it's important for people to know. Like, now, this car is a 300 mile range. So, for living in Southern California, it's, I never have a problem. On a long trip like this, you gotta really map it out. But now, I know people who've taken this same car, the Bolt, from Texas to California back and forth several times. You just gotta really, plan it out on these long trips. Now, depending on where you live, and if you can charge even into a regular 120 outlet at your home every night, then you're fine. You know, like there's, I don't have that at my apartment, but there's charging by this uh, beach parking lot in Santa Monica. So I just bought a yearly pass to park there. And was, that's where I'm going to um, That's the only thing that worries me is charger availability. Well, it really depends on where, what part of the country you live and what your driving pattern is. If you, you know, just have kind of a regular nine to five job and you go and, and as long as you have either charging at work or at home, you're fine. If you have to do a lot of long distance driving, then you gotta think about how that works. But now, I, so that's the other thing too that I love being an EV owner is that sometimes there's other EV people charging, we always talk, we always talk, what's your car like? So, Wednesday when I was driving out I stopped in Quartzsite, Arizona and I was talking to a guy who had a BMW with a 400 mile range and him and this other guy were telling me about a new company called Lux I believe out of San Francisco that has a 500 mile range. Most of the EVs now have at least a 250 to 300 mile range.
Casa Grande. Wow, Graham, glad you know what you're doing. California is about five times intense as this state. Washington is almost as heartless, but not as heartless. Now you can use uh, Tesla chargers. Tesla cars, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I saw you with my fiance, uh, even in Tempe, which in your, oh wow, right on. Uh, what else? I uh, just got your Schultz scene, right? Well, um, high speed rail was suppressed, yeah, I know. Supposed to be finished by now, but rich people didn't want it in the backyard. Of course, the NIMBY is the worst. Happy Saturday. All right, guys, I think my car's about done, but I just wanted to check in with you. That's my story, the good, the good, and the, the, the challenging parts of it. But I'm here, I made it. And once, once I get to Indio and West, then I'm, then I'm free. I mean, from Indio all the way to, to, to LA. There's fast charging all along the 10 freeway. So I won't, I won't, I'm not worried about it. It's just there's this stretch between Phoenix and India where there's only a couple of charging spaces. It's long stretches of desert where there's nothing. So there's literally, when you're coming west from Phoenix, there's Quartzsite, Blythe, there's not, there's not much for about 120 some miles. So if you're not, and you got to figure in the burn. That's the other thing. So if you've got, let's say, my car is fully charged at 300 miles, and I'm traveling 140 miles, you got to figure in on the highway. You use more miles. It's the opposite of a gas car. A gas car, you get better mileage on the on the highway, right? Electric cars, you get better. Your range lasts longer in the in the city because you when you press your brakes, it recharges the battery. So when you're driving on the highway, it's what's called the burn. So between, on a 140 mile trip, you're probably gonna have an additional 60 miles of burn. So that 140 mile trip is gonna take 200 miles. And you got the air conditioning on, and depending on your speed, like the speed limit out here in Arizona is 75, it's 70 in California. So I'm setting my speed at like 69, 70, 69. But, because if I go 75 or 80, then I'm gonna burn a lot of miles. So you really got to think, it's a, it's a similar thing, I don't know, I kind of liked it, I like to put all the math and the equations, I have a very active brain, and so when I put it to use on stuff, it works better. Um, so, thanks for the info, right on. Fun fact, the first car industry was actually EV, yep. So um, that's just stuff you got to take into consideration. If it's windy, you got to take that into consideration. But I don't know. I feel better. I didn't buy gas today. I didn't support the warmongers. And hey, maybe my electricity is coming from a coal po power, coal powered, yeah, power plant. But whatever. I feel better. I just don't want to give the oil industry my money. Um, Not as many as you would have had. My brother, looks like you got it. Thanks for the tour and taking us on your journey. Cheers and high spirits. Thank you all. So, so long from Blythe and the charging stations in Blythe. I will be back on the highway soon. And uh, I'm going to be in Cancun. I have a show in Cancun next to uh, the 18th. Um, and then I'll be in El Salvador at the end of June. Things are happening, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for supporting what I do. Obviously, you can't super chat because I've been demonetized for over two years. So if you like this chat today and can see fit to go, um, if you would have given money on a super chat today, 
go to my Venmo, which is at Graham-Elwood, or if you go to my website, I have a PayPal link, I have a PO box, I have a, under all my videos, you have, I have a Bitcoin and Ethereum wallet. If you want to donate, anyway, anything helps so that I can do videos like this, because normally you guys could just give me super chat money, but they won't let me, they don't like me talking about my EV. Um, so thanks everybody, and if there's any moms in the house, happy Mother's Day tomorrow. And I'll be in, uh, I'll be in Cancun this week, so might not be as many uh, live streams, but so it's gonna be spotty. But uh, you're the best. Thanks everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it, and uh, we'll talk soon. Shave your knuckles for justice. And charge.